Hi. Uh, welcome to Hangouts on uh, Air with the uh, SHM Shipcare. Uh, Ocean's Day is uh, just around the corner. So today we are going to talk a lot about oceans and plastic pollution that is hampering our marine environment. And uh, the theme for this uh, year's uh, Ocean Day is Our Oceans, Our Future. It's a very futuristic theme and there's a lot of lot, there's a lot that you know one can think about that what are we doing to the oceans and how are we hampering it. So plastic pollution is something that is plaguing us a lot these days. You must have observed a lot of posts, a lot of news that talk about, you know, the beach cleanup, the Warsaw beach cleanup, or basically cleaning activities happening along the coast and all around, all across the world. So you must be wondering, why is this suddenly getting so urgent? So to tell us more about this, we have a very special guest with us today, Dr. Deepak Apte, who is the director of BNHS Mumbai, that is Bombay Natural History Society Mumbai. He's a marine ecologist by profession and he's an expert in uh, marine environment and marine uh, zoologist. Uh, he ha He's also a member of the Maharashtra Bo Animal Board Com Committee and he's a recipient of the prestigious Whitley Award for his work on, cre on creating a protected environment for the giant clams in Lakshadweep. Dr. Apte he has also published four books and uh, 45 uh, reviewed publications along with several articles on the subject. So please join me and welcome Dr. Apte. Uh, Dr. Apte, so uh, what has been, I mean, you are a marine ecologist and you have been doing a lot of projects in this area. So what is your view about the rising uh, plastic pollution that is plaguing a marine environment? Well, I'm glad at least this subject started receiving attention uh, in the recent past. Uh, this is not something very new. Uh, I have been diving for the last 30 years and I have seen more trash underwater than what you see on land. So it has been always a great concern uh, for all those working underwater is the uh, amount of trash that exists on sea floor is phenomenal. The tragedy is that uh, majority of the people doesn't know what happened underwater. It's only when this trash started coming in huge quantum on the shores we realized that something is wrong with our uh, habits. Yeah. I think what is really required is cleaning of beaches is, is fine. It's like we are treating a disease. Uh, but we have to, you know, in the first place, get rid of uh, uh, this disease in itself. I think we have to clean our minds first. Uh, somehow I believe, uh, you know, Indians as such, we are, we are very, very uncivilized when it comes to disposal of waste. You know, we care little about uh, throwing uh, away things, you know, whether it's in public uh, areas or even, uh, you know, in our backyards so can you put our speaker i can't hear you can you hear now yeah so unless you know we clean up our minds uh, how you'll be able to clean up our beaches or forests or our you know grasslands uh, so therefore there is a larger prospection required uh, you know on this subject if you have to really deal with this issue because this issue is of an epic proportion uh, what you see in terms of trash on beaches, and we have been recently hearing the news about cleaning of Mumbai Beach. This is a very small section of a beach. See how much garbage has been collected in you know just few hours or few days. Imagine the whole coast of India, and there is thousand times more garbage uh, lying uh, on the ocean beds, which we yet don't know. And the amount of impacts it has on coastal and marine biodiversity are phenomenal. There is no doubt about it. It's not just plastic, you know, which is visible to you. There is a lot of invisible plastic uh, from uh, cosmetic, uh, you know, industries goes as this plastic beads, silicon beads, uh, far more dangerous than visible plastic, because that is what really will kill large uh, number of more pelagic animals uh, per se. I think we have to look at, uh, you know, this issue very, very seriously, uh, because this is probably one of the major causative factor for decline in large mammals. Uh, you see, a lot of mortality of whales world over is uh, also mostly attributed to uh, plastic, yeah. uh, which is quite worrisome. So uh, have you observed from a zoological and from a marine ecologist point of view, have you observed any stark pattern in the marine environment due to this pollution? Uh, no, there is certainly, uh, you know, in certain areas where for example, if you see disposal of uh, uh, no fishing nets, uh, fishing nets, of course, is, is also a kind of a nylon, which is 
and again a cause of concern because uh, most of these air breathing uh, marine animals like sea turtles like dolphins like the gong mm-hmm. or whales they do get entangled into dispose of these waste nets and they drown so most of the time what you see in terms of mortality or this washing away of carcasses are not necessarily attributed only to water pollution they also can be because of this uh, you know uh, undisposed of kind of nets lying all across the ocean beds all over it's not just the problem of india i think it's the problem of the world okay so uh, now since ocean day is coming closer there's a lot of activity happening in terms of you know cleaning up of beaches cleaning up of the coastline but then the waste again comes and piles piles up so is there a solution to this i mean cleaning the beach is that's what the solution that's what i have said cleaning of mines is what is really essential <laughs> than cleaning of beaches because if your mines are cleaned up and if you change our if you change our habits of disposing of garbage you know uh, in that sense our beaches will get cleaned automatically because the same garbage you know which is going back to the sea see the best part of the sea is it doesn't keep anything within itself it gives you back with interest so if you know you throw one ton you will get two ton not just from mumbai from other places also uh, but i think we we got to change our habits and unless we do that no amount of uh, you know cleaning is going to be suffice because we'll be able to clean 1 km stretch 2 km stretch we won't be able to clean 8000 km of coastline you know it's virtually impossible even with all might of 1.2 billion people clean ocean because this dirt will come every day because we are pumping in this waste every day into the sea so unless our source is stopped completely this waste will keep coming to the beaches it doesn't mean that we should not clean we of course we should clean and try to make as much as we could but that's you know you have a gangrene and you're trying to put a bandaid on uh, you know that one and expecting it to heal that's not going to happen so from a, apart from the mindset part which you just spoke about you know there are certain areas who which don't even have a proper waste management or a waste disposal system so in that case what what role could the government play here in actually you know streamlining the entire thing so that you know once the waste management is planned out properly then at, at least the dump won't come and lie on the coastline so what do you think about this you know uh, every time when we have nothing else to argue we start blaming governments the government <laughs> is not doing anything government is made up of all of us you know it's it's not an entity which came from nowhere these are our own people you see eventually government will have its own limitation in terms of what does they could do and 1.2 billion people uh, compared to maybe 100000 people in the government system who are trying to be this issue is a disproportionate kind of an argument i think government i mean you look at the prime minister's whole ambition for uh, you know swachh bharat you know i think it is one of the most remarkable uh, program uh, in that sense so government has put down its intent we are trying to make it ceremonial because our minds are not cleaned up yeah. i think to make swachh bharat clean we have to first you know swachh our minds uh, in that sense then you will see transformation i mean i can't believe that uh, you know the way we have progressed in science we do not have ability to you know uh, clean our environment we do have i think somewhere uh, you know this aspect is lacking uh, within us and i think that spark has to happen at some point of time otherwise no amount of government scheme will be able to you know deal with this problem i am pretty sure about it because i have been seeing this for last 30 years at least that i know that there have been empty number of schemes have come up in terms of you know pollution control cleaning of waste water i think we are extremely ceremonial in some of those aspects we have to you know take this program as a 21st century challenge for us as a nation uh, unless we take this up it's always will remain a, you know ambition which is kind of not supported by bulk of uh, you know population so if uh, if you were to uh, you know list down a few things that you know common people like you and me would start doing from today okay fine we need to start these basic things from now on which will actually contribute in keeping our oceans and our beaches clean so what those what would those things be 
you see there are two things which i believe individually we can always do that first thing is you educate ourselves because you educate ourselves we will change our own uh, you know ways of the way we live uh, you know we have been teaching in schools i have i have joined bnh as education officer way back in 1993 and i have been teaching school kids since then that don't use plastic bags you know for everything you buy take a jute bag or take a cloth bag which has much longer life and it also looks very trendy what of what is the population today of this country you know practice that is very very dismal you see if plastic bag is a issue you have to get plastic bag out of system and i'm not saying every single plastic bag i'm saying the disposable plastic bag which create nuisance because plastic bags is a user uh, you know a necessity uh, doesn't mean that we have to write off all plastic bags but at least those plastic bag you know which we can certainly get rid of that is something which we can do individually i don't use plastic bag i never used in last 30 years uh, you know in my house it is it's totally prohibited item you know to bring vegetables to bring all grocery and plastic bags you always get it into you know cotton bag jute bag if every family start doing this you know i mean look at mumbai population if 20 million people decide to get away with this plastic bags you know you reduce 20 million at least plastic bag every day it's a huge number i think it is achievable goal it's not something which is impossible it's just that you have to you know take that one call that no i will not use plastic bag from today i think if we take those small steps as individuals it also contribute hugely i think the second aspect which i you know i always get amazed uh, i've been traveling in mumbai trains for last almost two and a half decades and even the most educated class which i see traveling there when you drink water and you know one bottle is empty you throw it on the tracks when you you know eat small chocolate wrapper throw it wrapper you know, on the tracks i think these are small things but add to the volume of the garbage which we create which goes again back into the sea you know so all these small habits individually we change i think it will make certainly a huge difference uh, to our you know not just ocean but to our forest and our you know all these open lands which are today so filthy correct correct but i do agree with you because no matter how educated you are people still just forget all those things when they have a wrapper or they have a plastic bottle in their hand they just crush it and throw it off they don't have know you, have you seen a foreigner which is traveling on beach ever disposing of waste oh, no, no. i am not seeing that in That's fact they they will pick it up if there is a garbage on on the beaches they will pick it up put it in pocket and put it in the okay. dustbin i think that's i think that's a genetic structure you know which over course of time these people must have evolved i think we will need a generational change in that sense you know that it happens by default uh, you know no amount of education will be able to i mean what kind of education you require to all those people traveling in you know mumbai i think bulk of them are uh, serving uh, you know class they are all educated yeah at least they are graduated post graduate or working sector they don't need education i think they need somewhere you know this sensitization that look what they are doing is not correct today they don't feel anything about it. you know for them it's like a way of life correct so uh moving ahead to uh, you know just talking about now ships boats and cargo vessels they happen to use oceans on a larger scale than the normal people who transport goods and services over long distances and we have heard of things like oil spills happening very on and off so what precautions or you know as a shipping uh, sector shipping sector as a fraternity what precautions or what what can they do in order to contribute to you know reducing the plastic pollution or reducing any harm that is caused to the oceans while they use it practicing uh, you know uh, good governance is much more easier for a sector which is well established you know i can imagine enforcing cleanliness for 1.2 billion people is a challenge but fishing uh, or the shipping industry which is a very well established industry it's not that they don't know Uh, what the legislation is so and there are number of laws you know which uh, govern the shipping uh, sector they are not supposed to dispose of untreated waste in the sea but the point is whether they do or don't or who is going to check that 
See, we do not have any kind of an enforcement mechanism as such in this country to see what happens offshore. Uh, you know, so bulk of uh, the things which happens are offshore, especially in shipping sector. Once they are docked, they are not going to dispose of you know all their waste uh, into the sea where they are docked. Uh, but when they are offshore, uh, you know that is where the whole uh, monitoring is essential. I think monitoring is one part. Again, self-regulation is also very, very important uh, in that sense. I think some of the international large, uh, you know, shipping firms uh, are, uh, you know, looking into these issues seriously. And they're much better today than what they used to be. Uh, be it, you know, issue of blast, be it issue of, you know, oil spills. Oil spills will continue to happen. Accidents will continue to happen. There is no mechanism by which you can make ship shipping industry 100% accident. That's not possible. Uh, the question is, are we equipped, uh, you know, ourselves as a nation to deal with these incidents? Because our shipping sector is going to increase. We are now expanding, you know, into inland waterways as one mode of transport. It means we are actually increasing our footprint, both in oceans as well as freshwater, very rapidly. Uh, but unfortunately, our mitigation mechanism is simply not in place. You know, so on one side, we expand our infrastructure. But we do not expand our capability to do deal with the disaster that will happen because of the expanded infrastructure. I think both things, these things has to go hand to hand, which unfortunately is not happening. I think that is one of the governance issues which government need to look at. Is that yes, we require certainly much uh, efficient you know, transport system. Certainly, there is no doubt about that. Be it Mumbai or large urban areas or smaller areas. But at the same time, how will ensure that we have adequate infrastructure to deal with the mishaps happen. I think that is a greater challenge. We never said we don't want to you know, develop waterways. But while developing waterways, are we developing simultaneously you know, the infrastructure to deal with these issues? I think that is something which certainly only government can do. It is something which you and I cannot do. Uh, so there are certain areas which of course government also need to improve uh, on those areas. But you are right that shipping sector has got a direct and indirect impact, especially you know these large uh, uh, cargo ships when they are you know traveling in near shore waters. There are issues of you know its impact on the uh, traditional fishing areas, for example. The impact on large migratory species like whales and whale sharks, you know, which a lot of them get hit because of propeller heads. World over, it's not just case point here. And these always are you know areas for improvement, even for. Uh, for uh, shipping sector. Now, very simple example I will give. Now, for example, we have got in fishery sector what is something called as a fish tracking devices. Now, there is a satellite disk map which you know every fishing boat, large dollar will get. They know where exactly this large shoal of fish are, so they can go and catch them. Uh, you know to make it fishing more efficient. Why we cannot have similar system on these commercial uh, ships where they'll be able to track movement of these uh, you know large mammals? Through sonar system, why they cannot be fed with uh, you know satellite feed on movement of these mammals? I think a lot of these propeller heads could be easily avoided if there is a guided mechanism to the shipping sector. Today it is not there, unfortunately. So when they are in near shore water, and when uh, you know a large pod of whales or large pod of dolphins or you know large uh, you know congregation of sea turtles are moving, they are destined to you know come within this propeller heads. I think these are the more science-based avenues we have to, you know, explore. And shipping sector must adopt this as a new way of looking at shipping. Correct. Correct. Okay. So it's it's more like a mixture of uh, the individual intent as well as science that needs to come into play in order to keep this thing in check. Correct. Absolutely. 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 I mean, technology is there. We are using technology everywhere. Why we cannot use it for, you know, some of these areas? Certainly, technology is is one, you know, part of the solution. But I think, as I said, cleaning our minds is the biggest uh, solution for this problem. Unless Definitely. that happens, you know, technology will have its own limitations. Agree. Agree. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, yeah. Dr. Thank, Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, viewers, as Dr. Ape said, so we can come up with a lot of government can come up with a lot of solutions you know entrepreneurs can come up with a lot of technology to keep the plastic pollution in check but it 
ultimately it boils down to you and me how we as individuals are going to contribute to reducing this uh, problem which we are facing head along in front of us so let's pledge you know to do something on our uh, on our individual and start disposing of our waste properly stop using plastic bags in the first place so that you know it doesn't go and you know, get dumped up in the ocean and you know it'll get piled up on the coastline so uh, have a good oceans day and i hope you have uh, you know picked up some very good insights from this hangout please leave your comments in the uh, comment box below thank you so much have a good day bye